Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ. This Tuesday, May the 14th, this is a take two. Uh, we continue to have difficulty with Zoom. It's uh, I have to contact the people and find out what gives. Uh, I don't understand why it's so glitchy now that they updated and made it more contemporary. That being said, um, it's good to be in front of you doing morning devotions, as always. So let us go straight to it. Let us go to Stephen Charleston, who's in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And Stephen writes for us this morning. Sometimes we have to choose. So often in life, it comes down to that. We have to make a choice. The crossroads is where our spirit is lived, spirituality is lived out where it shapes the world in which we can live. When you find yourself standing in the place of decision, make sure you are standing next to the Spirit. Amen. Now we move on to the Center for Action and Contemplation. And uh, this week's topic is Loving a Suffering Planet. Love is Stronger Than Hope is today's title. So, our great mistake is we tie hope to outcome. Cynthia Borgelt. Brian McLaren suggests a continuing source of hope, not suggest a continuing source of hope not dependent on the outcome. If we can see a likely path to our desired outcome, we have hope. If we can see no possible path to our desired outcome, we have despair. If we are unsure whether there is a possible path or not, we keep hope alive, but it remains vulnerable to defeat if that path is closed. When our prime motive is love, a difficult logic comes into play. We find courage and confidence, not in the likelihood of a good outcome, but in our commitment to love. Love may or may not provide a way through to a solution to our predicament, but it will provide a way forward in our predicament. One step into the unknown at a time. Sustained by this fierce love, as my friend Jackie Lewis calls it, we may persevere long enough that, to our surprise, a new way may appear where there had been no way. At that point, we will have reasons for hope again. But even if hope never returns, we will live by love through our final breath. To put it differently, even if we lose hope for a good outcome, we need not lose hope of being good people as we are able, courageous, wise, kind, and loving, in defiance of all that is bad around us. We feel arising within us this sustained declaration. We will live as beautifully, bravely, and kindly as we can, as long as we can, no matter how ugly, scary, and mean the world becomes, even if failure and death seem inevitable. <clears throat> in fact, it is only in the context of failure and death that this virtue develops. That's why Richard Rohr describes this kind of hope as the fruit of a learned capacity to suffer wisely and generously. You can come out much larger and that largeness, beco largeness becomes your hope. Hope is complicated, but even hope fails. Something bigger can replace it, and that is love. Choctaw elder Stephen Charleston places love at the center of our hope. The key to stopping environmental apocalypse is not science, but love. For decades, we have been staring at the scientific reports. They have not sufficiently inspired us to change our apocalyptic reality. But where science has failed, faith can succeed. We must help humanity rediscover Mother Earth, their loving parent, the living world that sustains them. We must help them feel her love just as we show them that love can be returned. 
and it can begin by gathering people around two simple questions. Where were you in nature when you experienced the vision of such beauty that it took your breath away? And how did that make you feel? If you can answer those two questions, you're on your way to meeting the mother you may never have known before. Amen. Now we move to St. Paul, Minnesota, to God Pause, uh, a daily devotion brought to you by Luther Seminary. And this morning we're reading Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34 and 35b. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships, the Leviathan, that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditations be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Our devotion writer is Daniel Valasakos, pastor of Mount Zion Lutheran, Tucson, Arizona. And Daniel writes... An eye-catching sunset can cause us to pause from our worldly attentions to focus on the nature of the divine as our knees seem to weaken at such an awe-inspiring sight. The one who gives breath also takes our breath away as the beauty of the sky transforms second by second. We stand humbled before the activity of the Lord's creation of such an awe-inspiring sight even when no one else in the parking lot seems seemingly has time for such a divine moment. A car pulls into the parking space next to you, and as the occupants get out, you are moved by the Spirit to point out the beauty the Lord is giving at that moment. It doesn't matter the response because you are being you as you join the psalmist. I will give praise to my God while I have my being. You share good news not because you've been trained to do so. You share this response because this is who you are, who God created, who has filled you with the eternal breath to witness to the Lord and the Lord's hope among us. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace, give us eyes to see and give us words to clearly express your divine nature at work in this world, in humanity, in our lives. May your spirit speak through the witness of your faithful. Amen. Well, it's my hope that this works. May you be a blessing to those around you and that you have the opportunity to be a neighbor. Amen.